Hi, welcome to my first lecture on the Queen's Gambit. Uh, in this lecture, I want to cover some of the basics of the Queen's Gambit and the Queen's Gambit Accepted. Um, I did already have two lectures just on uh, the Queen's Pawn game in general, and um, I'm going to sort of start my lecture series on the Queen's Pawn games by first talking about the Queen's Gambit. So the Queen's Gambit is um, d4 followed by d5 and then um, white plays c4 now whoops that was a mistake you may ask yourself oh or I tried to previously explain why white played c4 well the reason is white wants to control the center and would like to play um, e4 so if I back up a move, so white wants to play e4, but can't because black would just take the pawn. So it wants to attack the center. And how can it attack the center? Well, some people may say, well, why don't you just play uh, knight to c3? You know, attacking the pawn. But, uh, you know, the queen already protects the pawn, so that does little good. Okay, and then uh, it's you know, and White still wants to play e4, but uh, but you know it's Black's move now, and all that Black would do is then play Knight f6, and White really can't play um, e4 now because Black would simply capture the pawn. So how is White supposed to get e4 in? Um, you know, some would say, well, you know, why don't you move the pawn to e3, bring the bishop to here, and then move the pawn again. Well, moving this this um, c pawn twice, uh, you're effectively losing a move. So that's not a really good plan. So how can white really attack the center? Well, the answer is by attacking it with a with a sort of a side pawn, because now it threatens the capture the center pawn and then it could actually move e4 so that's the reason behind uh, c4 well how about um, uh, you know the possible you know moves by black after this well in, uh, in my lectures I'm really only going to cover uh, two basic moves well actually three uh, um, C6, which is actually known as a slob defense, it's played about 42% of the time in master level games. Um, E6, which is um, sort of referred to as the um, main line of the Queen's Gambit declined um, opening, that's played about 40% of the time. And I'm also going to talk about, hopefully in this lecture, and looks like it's going to go to the next lecture, of or black captures, and this is only played about 13% of the time. So, uh, getting back to the moves, though, because one of the uh, comments that I received was uh, uh, people were asking that I actually maybe slow down a bit and explain some of the moves. It seems like I explain some moves in detail and go by or quickly through others, so I'm trying to um, explain why some of the moves are made, and maybe this actually helps to explain uh, the various openings. Um, so what are the possible moves by, well we already covered the possible moves by black. Um, probably a common move by black though that I haven't said, um, which would seem natural, uh, would be um, knight to f6. You'd say, well, why doesn't black play that? Well here's the reason. Let's say um, black played knight to f6. Well then white would just take the pawn. And what happens if that um, if white captures, I mean black captures with a knight then white now gets to play e4 which is what it wanted to play. And it would control the center very nicely. And if black captured with the queen then we would just move our knight out. Attacking the queen, the queen would have to move and then we play e4 accomplishing our goals. That's why you don't play 
on the uh, to the um, queen's gambit, you don't play knight f6. So, uh, like I said before, this lecture is going to be about um, the queen's gambit accepted, which is where black takes, and then I'm going to cover um, the main line, and then after that I'll cover the Slav defense. Okay, so let's continue talking about the Queen's Gambit accepted, which is where black takes the pawn. So now what should white play? Well, if you're white and you're overly concerned about winning this pawn back, there is a way to win it back, which is by the following moves. Whoops, not that move, but um, basically by moving um, the queen to a4, giving check. I covered this in the last lecture actually, but my analysis was actually quite uh, a little bit inaccurate. Giving check, and then normally um, black plays knight to c6. What this is doing is actually now black is attacking this pawn twice. And obviously, you know, at this point, uh, black can't move the knight because it's pinned. But if, um, but if white were to capture the pawn, then black could just easily recapture this pawn since it's attacked twice. And that's what I said in my last lecture, but uh, what I would actually happen is white, uh, black would actually end up winning this pawn. So what um, white needs to do first is play knight f3 to defend this pawn. And then um, black is going to play knight to f6 stopping e4 and then white can simply take the pawn. So if you're concerned about getting that pawn back that's how you do it. Um, but I don't really recommend this because um, the white queen is out too early and is exposed to attack. You got your pawn back but uh, um, you know your, your queen is out too early and exposed. So let's back up to say well what is what should be white's next move? Well should actually be um, knife to, knight to f3. And you can say, oh, well, why? Well, what we're doing is we're stopping e5. If we were to make another move, say, uh, before this, like e4, which is a, another move you could play, black can play just e5, attacking the center again and uh, um, come off with a pretty good game. So what we want to do is prevent black from also seizing control of the center. We want to, you know, our goal is to really control, you know, this square. And if we let black get uh, e5 in, it can control e5. So we're going to play knight f3 to prevent black from playing e5. And then black is going to play um, knight f6 to prevent us from, you know, which controls these two center squares and prevents white from playing e4. Because if white played e4, black would simply capture the pawn. So now um, white will play uh, e3. Uh, this has a benefit and uh, sort of something that white doesn't like. Well, one, what it does positive for us is that we we threaten to take back the pawn. We're not winning a pawn, we're just taking back the pawn we got or we gave up. Uh, the negative is it's blocked in this bishop right here. You know, before this move, before the move, the bishop could come out. But now it's sort of, now this bishop is stuck here. And we're going to have to get it out a different way. So in one way, when you move e3, you free this bishop on f1 and attack this pawn. But another way, you sort of lock in your bishop on c1. Well, unfortunately, I'm running out of time for this uh, lecture, so I'm actually going to continue it in the next one, and I guess this will be a two-part lecture on the Queen's Gambit Accepted.